Good morning. Our lesson today has to do with being in the army of God. Now, that may be foreign to some of you, and some of you are veterans. I know Tommy is. Don't know about any of the rest of you guys or girls. But uh, I remember being drafted. The year was 1970. <clears throat> we were in the Vietnam conflict. And uh, I was called to by the draft board here, and I got it transferred because I was teaching in Atlanta to the draft board down there. And I had to go to the old Sears building across the street from the Atlanta uh, Crackers baseball team uh, where they played. It was defunct then. The Braves had already moved there. And there were about 500 of us being screened and examined and prodded and poked and just all kinds of stuff they did to us. And I didn't have to go. I, I passed everything, but because I was newly married, the wife I had was pregnant, just found out we were pregnant, and I was a school teacher. I didn't have to go to Vietnam. Everybody else in that line went to Vietnam as I looked up and down. <laughs> but boy, that made a big impression on me. And, you know, they yelled at you, trying to get you trained, trying to break your will. Uh, you know, you, you, you didn't have any will. You didn't have any say. You're no longer you. You're theirs. You belong to them. And we had to come up with allegiance to our nation instead of maybe to home or family or whatever else we had going on. They had to learn to follow orders. No matter what the orders were. And be willing to die for the flag. This is one of the hardest lessons I have preached ever. Because even though I was glad back then that I didn't have to go to Vietnam, I'm just a little bit ashamed now that I didn't fulfill a duty. And even though the government considered what I was doing okay, it still has pains of hurt now. But the army that I'm talking about today is much more important than the army that I was almost in. And these things that you see up here are things that have to be in place in our Christianity. Our wills have to be broken, but God doesn't yell at us anymore. Now we reflect back as we did a few minutes ago about how good God is to us and what he's done for us in order so that I can get rid of my will and take on his will. And the allegiance to this life has to be given over to allegiance to the cross. And I have to learn to follow his orders. He's my sergeant. He's my general. He's my president. Whatever you want to put his authority over our army, it is now Jesus. And I have to be willing to die for him. We don't talk about that in church. Because we haven't, as Paul told the Corinthians, you haven't given your blood yet. But folks, that time may come. And we need to be ready for it. Because Satan is real. He is out there and he is after you and he's after me. And I need to get my mind squirreled around whatever you want to call it 
so that my allegiance is to him and to nothing else. And if it costs me my life, I will give it. During the first century, there was a man by the name of Polycarp. That's kind of a crazy name for us. He's a real person. And the Romans caught him and told him that he needed to express his allegiance to the, to the Roman emperor. Polycarp replied, 86 years, he's done me no wrong. I cannot deny him now. And the Roman soldiers poured oil on him and lit him as a street lamp. And he burned to death. And I'm wondering, is my faith in Jesus such that it will allow me to say, life is nothing, I care for the Lord. Is my faith strong enough that I understand he will take care of me even in those times of death. So this morning, I want to kind of realign our spiritual warfare. Because we're in America and we've had it good. I'll go to church if I feel like it. I'll go to church if. I'll, I'll be a Christian today or I, whatever. But to have that kind of dedication, that kind of faith that would cause me to want to stay with the Lord regardless of what happens to my life, to my health, to my family, whatever. And I'm going to use as a jumping off place in this 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 2 and 3 or 3 and 4, excuse me. Paul has just told Timothy to be strong in the grace that was given to him and pass it on to able men who could teach others the same. He says, Timothy, this is not the end of it. There's more to come. So because there's more to come and because, because there's going to be this persecution and it's liable to come in our lives, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I have an uncle, I had an uncle, who was with Patton in the march across Europe. And he talked about how cold it was that winter and how that the soldiers would gather together under blankets. They'd pile their up blankets pull their blankets and try to preserve their body heat because the ground was frozen and they were out there in that cold and no warmth and I remember him shaking his hand at me and saying Charlie that was a hard hard time endure hardness That means for my faith to stay intact no matter what happens to me. No matter what comes. Endure it. Go through it. Do not give up. And the reason is because you're a soldier of Jesus. You're a soldier of the Lord. And by enduring, you can be a good soldier of Jesus. He says, no man that goes to war entangles himself in the affairs of this life. It's well known that the Roman soldiers were not allowed to have any other job. As long as they were enlisted, Rome was their their ultimate. It was, it was all they thought about. It was all they put their time in on. And death was a penalty for leaving that thought pattern.
We all have things going on in our lives right now. Things that to a person who doesn't have any faith could tear you up to the point of you just want to give up. But in Jesus, we are to endure whatever comes our way and not allow those things to take our hearts and our minds away from service to the Lord. And the reason is, Paul says, that we may please him who chosen him to be a soldier. I was, felt really torn when they called me to the draft board. I was torn that I got picked. That's an honor. I was torn that I may have to leave my wife. If they had kept me, I would have been duty bound to do whatever they said. Now I'm in the Lord's army. And I'm duty bound. My honor is at stake. His honor is at stake to follow his orders. But you know, that's not normal. And so there, there's some psychology here that's got to be talked about. We're in the flesh. My back is killing me today. I'm telling you, you have aches, you have pains. Jan, Janice is at home sick this morning. Others are out. And by the way, Willa's not sick. She's on a cruise. <laughs> it is today or tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, actually. Tomorrow morning. Yeah. But she's gone to the airport now. <laughs> We're in the flesh and we have all kinds of things that bombard us that take away from our attention to the Lord. But at the same time, we are spiritual people. And that's got to come out. And it's the mind that does this. I can say, woe is me, my back's hurting. Or I can say, Lord, here I am. And I'll tell you which one I'm going to feel better doing. Lord, here I am. Paul says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 9, You are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Make the distinction that Paul makes. This old body is not going to be hurting me eternally. I'm going to be enjoying the presence of the Lord because I'm not in the flesh. Now you need to know in Romans chapter 8, that is the tail end of the thought. That is not the beginning of that thought. You were lost in sin. God sent Jesus to make you his righteousness. Because you're walking in the steps of faith, God will not charge you with sin. Because he will not charge you with sin. And because you've been baptized into his body, into his death. Raised to walk in the newness of life. And God has given you the gift of eternal life. Then comes chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation. To those who walk not after the flesh. But after the spirit of life. For the spirit of life and made you free from the law of sin and death. And you have been made the righteousness of God. No, you're no longer in the flesh. You're in the spirit. And if so be the spirit of God dwells in you. If he dwells in you. 
Because if any man does not have the Spirit of God, you don't belong to him. But God has chosen you as a soldier. He's honored you with his uniform, which is the white robe of righteousness. So embrace the call. I took my little envelope and I went up there and I said, I've been sent this and I'm answering the call. Embrace the call. You're drafted by Christ. And that has all kinds of ramifications. You must endure the hardness. Life brings hard things. Surrender your will to Christ. It's no longer me, Lord. It's you. Not my will, but thine be done. Submit to the Lordship of Christ. And if you don't know what Lordship is, let me tell you. It's he is the king of and he is in that position and he has the right and to tell me and you what to do. I'm not Lord. You're not Lord. In this army, he is. And he's equipped us to go into the battle. I can't tell you in this congregation what uh, General George Patton told the boys when they were getting ready to land. It's ugly. But he got his point across. And what he told them was, you have what you need to win this battle, and there is nobody that can take you. And we need to have that same mindset. We are equipped. I give you Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 there. That's the armor of God. Put on the armor of God. Yes, that is your protection. Use the sword of God, the word of God as your weapon. There is nobody that can take you because Jesus is your king. But now we get to the battle. My uncle told me all kinds of war stories. A German fighter plane came down the road spraying bullets from a machine gun. And they all dove over into the ditch. He landed on a German general. right on top of him when he jumped in the ditch. You see, the Germans were going to ambush him when they got by him. He killed him with his bare hands. The battle is just as real for us as it was for them on that day. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 says, but we wrestle not with flesh and blood. And I've separated that part of that verse out because I want to indwell that into you before we get into the rest of it. You read writers and you read commentaries and it says that the rest of this verse is this, that, and another. This passage says it is not flesh and blood. Paul writes to the Corinthians, and he tells them that Satan's angels, he has angels, transmit themselves or translate themselves, disguise themselves, depending on what translation you use, as angels of light. 
not flesh and blood. And all the things he's fixing to say have to do with things that are spiritual in nature, but they can appear to you in physical form. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places or heavenly places. This is out of this world stuff that attacks the rulers of the world. Yeah, our government can make a law that kills babies. Do you think that's holy? Do you think that's from God? That's from anything but. Against the rulers of darkness. Satan. And he'll get in your mind. And he'll get in the church. And he'll get wherever he can get in order to destroy you. This is the battle. And I don't care if it appears to you in the form of flesh and blood. And it can. It's really a spiritual battle. And it's a war for your soul. Lord God. Don't let me get entangled in that. So we want to avoid the entanglements. Soldiers going into battle must have their minds on what's in front of them. Now, yeah, I know the flank's got to be protected, Tommy. So has the rearward. Got to be protected. You put people out there. But there's a goal. An army doesn't go into battle for no reason. There has to be a goal. I've got to take that hill. I've got to take this castle. I've got to take this city. I've got to take this country. Whatever. There's a goal. And you don't go out there without a, the goal on your mind. And you don't need to go into life without the goal in your mind. I'm going to win this battle over sin. Because I've got heaven waiting on me. God has already declared it's mine. It is mine. And when Satan comes at me, Satan, what you've got to offer is nothing compared to what I've got waiting on me. So you need to understand, we are citizens of heaven. We're just visiting on earth. We're in God's image. And when we go back to God, I don't know what it's going to be like, but I want you to know something I've learned. We're not going to be separated from God. We're going to be joined to him. We already are joined to Christ. We already are joined to the Holy Spirit. And we're going to be joined to the Father forever. I don't know what that's like. I don't know what it looks like. But I know that's what the Bible teaches. Give me about an hour and a half. We go through that. We're just visiting. I've got that little house up there in Paris. It is not my home. I'm visiting. But you know what? Distractions can get us off our path. My granddaughter had surgery. She's coming along. On the 6th, my daughter-in-law is going to have surgery. Six-hour surgery. Pretty serious. Monday, I've got an MRI to see whether or not I'm going to have surgery. So guess what? There are things in life that can take your mind away from the Lord. Don't let them get off the path. Because it can happen easily. So we must. 
We must focus on our mission, and our mission is following Jesus. In this life, through all the problems, through everything, follow Jesus. Beware of the allurement of the world. That's where Satan comes in to tempt you. Beware that he's after you. He's actively after you. And keep your eyes focused on advancing because we're marching in the Lord's army. And our eyes must be open to heaven. Nowhere else. I love this little congregation, but guess what? This is not my goal. I love every one of you, but guess what? You're not my goal. My goal is the Lord. My goal is being with him. And I'm marching in this army with the Lord as my leader. But you need to recognize the enemy. Our enemy has always been Satan. It started in the Garden of Eden. He is our enemy. And it, even though it, is, it went through the wilderness of Judea, it went through Palestine, it went through all the things that have happened in history, it's now in Henry County. Tommy, that's here because you don't know what Henry County is. He's here. But if I just bypass not thinking about the things that I'm tempted with are his tools to get me away from God. It is his way of trying to cause havoc in the life of a Christian. Our commander is Jesus, and he's coming after us to carry us home. Listen, talk about Jesus coming again. It's going to be a homecoming for the Christian. People talk about, I dread the judgment. I don't, yes, bring it on, Lord. You've already started that with us. Yeah. Yeah. He forgave you. Judgment. You're innocent. You did it, but nope. He judged you innocent because of the blood of Jesus. So let's bring it together now. Maybe you can go home with a lesson. Now, I don't know. There's some really hard parts to Christianity. Really difficult. One is to realize we're not in the flesh, but spirit. Making that distinction and keeping that, that uh, so that we understand it. Yeah, I hurt. But guess what? That's not it. To resist the devil, to resist the, his evil power, and I've forgotten now where it was, but this past week I came across a passage of scripture and it said not to be a Christian is evil. Now some of y'all may know where that is. Look it up. I forgot. I've been reading so many places this week. But you got to resist him. And James says, if you resist him, he will flee from you. But James also says that when you draw near to God, he will draw near to you. That's the same verse. Resist him and get closer to God. And as since we are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, we need to focus on eternity because the fleshly body that we have is going to go away. And we need to focus on the value of what Jesus has done for us in saving us. So remember you're called to battle. 
I remember the call Daddy got me. He, he got me on the phone one night, and he said, Son, I hate to tell you this, but I think you've just been drafted. I've got your draft uh, letter right here in my hand. He sent it to me. Now, I didn't have to report there. I got it changed. But the call was there. And just as much as God is calling today, it is calling us to be in a draft for Jesus. Remember, your victory is sure. General Patton said they cannot stop you. They cannot take you. You go in there and you take them. Now you use some other uh, superlatives in there. <laughs> And it was ugly. But Jesus has assured us of the victory. And God has equipped us to battle. He's given us everything we need. And he has empowered us for everything that we face. And he walks with us into the fight. So I, I want you to, to know that this week, no matter what you're facing, Jesus is with you. And I want you to know this week that you've got to have in your faith that you're going to win this battle, not because of who you are, not because of what you are or done or have or whatever, but you're going to win because of Jesus. Will there be times you'll be disappointed? Probably. Will there be times when things didn't work out exactly the way you thought it would should? Probably. But guess what? You're going to win. And you've got to believe that and make that a part of your faith.